Hello, Forecaster here again, and we are back for detour number 15, and this is Flight Control HD. And this is a... It's an arcade airport control type game. It's very simple, and it... I think it's... Uh, it has the appearance and feeling of a mobile port. But it's pretty good, and I do play it sometimes. Now, the reason I was in the options menu is that I was turning the music back on, because I usually have it off. Because the game only has this one song that uh, repeats endlessly, and while it's not bad, it gets dull after a while. And I prefer having my own music or listening to a YouTube video or something instead. But I'm going to keep it on for this video. There are a few options. You have these volumes. Uh, full screen, low resolution, which lowers the quality of the textures, of course. And trackpad mode, which changes how selecting or controlling the planes work to be easier to use with a trackpad, obviously. Um, the game was released in 2010, and it is developed and released or published by Firemint, which I've never heard of for anything else other than this game. I haven't looked at what else they've done. Um, there are nine maps, these ones, and that's it. There hasn't been any new ones since 2010, and there probably won't be any more. Um, and I do play this now and then, usually, like I said, when watching videos, because I like to have something to do with my hands even while I'm listening on to something. And I've been slowly increasing the high scores of these levels, and my current goal is to get each level above 100, uh, which is more difficult than it would seem. The levels seem to be in a weird order based on the difficulty, which honestly I haven't really been paying attention to. Um, let's go into a level. Um, the maps have a nice amount of variation in them. They're of varying sizes and have a varying numbers of fields in them. And like I said, the game is incredibly simple. You just have planes coming in from the edges randomly with no real rhyme or reason. This is not a simulation of any kind. It is an arcade game. And realism has taken a back seat. Um, and you simply click on a plane and hold, and you draw a path for the plane, and it will follow that path and ideally end up at it is its um, landing strip. Now you can have it go around in circles if you want, um, through an unnecessarily long path. Of course, ideally you won't want to have them going straight for their intended landing site. Of course, the challenge is, is in not letting anything collide. As soon as you have a single collision, you lose the current round and have to start over from the beginning. And I've slowly been working my way up to these high scores that I have. And um, the game, the difficulty, ramps up pretty quickly actually as more and more planes will come in from the sides and what you definitely don't want to do is have the planes or helicopters um, be around the edges because planes can come in with very little warning you have this little exclamation mark that highlights the arrival but Usually I don't see those, at least not later in the game, because I'm focused on uh, 
routing planes. You can also see that there are planes that have different speeds. There are slightly bigger uh, planes of these this red variant, and they are faster than the smaller ones, um, which means you need to keep them apart and keep them from running into each other. And the helicopters are extraordinarily slow, of course. And there are certain levels that have two types of helicopters that need to go to different pads. And usually, and since they can come in from any direction, usually they will have to cross paths with other planes of other types. And as you can imagine, it can be quite hectic. You can speed up time by clicking this button over here, and there are actually two modes for that, which is nice. Uh, the first one will put an exclamation mark on here, and it will, uh, when the collision warning, which is the that one, when that appears, it will slow time back down to normal speed. The next step has a lock icon and is very dangerous because when the uh, when the collision warning appears, the game does not slow back down. You have locked it to a high speed, which is nice to be able to do in the beginning when routing is pretty easy. And collisions are relatively unlikely but then later on you probably want to bring the game back down to a normal speed um, and at some point you're going to have to keep it there because it will be quite difficult and of course as you can see the the planes don't have to come from the back of the strip or from the correct direction they can only approach from or they need basically need to go to this end once they have dinged and fade away they won't collide with anything anymore. So, yeah, basically, all all the planes are really helicopters in that regard, mechanically, um, except they are faster. Speed is the only real difference because once they reach the pad area here, they of no concern and that's pretty much it there are two um, special levels uh, one where you have special stunt planes that come in and you have a number of gates spread out around the level and you can rack up extra points by having the planes, the stunt planes, move through these gates, and the more they cross, or yeah, the more they move through, the more points you will get for it before having them land at their designated strip. And I honestly don't play that level all that much because it's actually pretty difficult. I believe I already have a uh, a score above a hundred on that one, so I haven't been. And there we have the first collision. Didn't beat my high score, which is unfortunate, but that gives us an opportunity to look at a different level. You can see, we have uh, aircraft carriers, a few levels there, and then the other special level is this one where you can see there's a wind uh, direction thing wind sock in the middle and the wind will be changing directions and as you can see these two fields are disabled so planes will only be able to land on these ones and then the direction can change and these can be dis disabled and these will be enabled and you need to adapt to that uh, let's play this one a little bit. It's a big, bit bigger. You can have time speed up. 
And you can see we now have four different types of aircraft, of planes, and two different types of helicopters, the uh, orange ones and the blue ones, or cyan, perhaps. So we now have a number of factors to keep track of. And then, of course, we have the different planes um, of the same types, but of different speeds. Um, I believe only the red ones and the blue ones do that. They have a big and a small variant. The uh, the sea planes, the cyan planes, and the yellow planes do not have uh, varying speeds. So, at least it's limited in that aspect for those planes, which is, if, if they did, both of those also did have different speeds, that would be quite chaotic, even more so than it is right now. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much the game. And, oh, I have a collision already, it's unfortunate. But yeah, there isn't much else to show. Um, one thing that bugs that bugs me are these uh, applause that you get when you lose for some reason. Uh, I think it would be, for one thing, they don't sound particularly enthusiast enthusiastic. I think it would, would have been enough to have applause when you actually beat your high score. There are also online leaderboards, but I don't really care about that as usual the stats, your personal stats for specific levels as well. I've been playing this one a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it there, but this is not the end of the video because I have a different game that I'm also going to show off, which was also related to airports. So we'll be back momentarily as I switch to that game. All right, so here we are, and this is Airport Madness 4, as you can see, quite obvious by the huge title. And as you can see up here, by these controls, this is actually a Flash game. It is pretty old, I don't know when it was released, and I, uh, it's not obvious on their website. It's made by Big Fat Simulations, as you can see down here. Uh, but it doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, this game, I encountered the third one as a free online game, of course. And I played it a lot because I really liked it. And this is obviously the sequel to that. The free Flash game also had a paid full version, um, which, is, which this is actually a sequel to. And I've actually bought both of these, uh, I believe bought them in a bundle or something, or maybe separately, I'm not entirely sure. Um, the third game, which is actually the third game, there are two, the first one and the second one, which are really, really basic and terrible. Uh, I've never actually played them. Um, but in this one, you have uh, profiles, and I've created in, uh, you can, click this button and it will take you right, it will automat automatically create a guest profile with the uh, default, this picture basically, and a default profile. You can um, enter a name, obviously, and you get to choose a profile and they have some different attributes. As you can see, um, no adverse weather effects or emergencies will occur during your shift. Planes move faster. Uh, things like that. Uh, the default one the, doesn't have anything special about them. Um, I usually play as that one. And this is a fresh setup of the game, of course. There are no, and this is a new profile, so this, there is no progress. Um, you have to unlock the levels 
in this one, of course. I think don't really remember. I haven't played the third one in quite a while, but I think there may have only been one level. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you have the default mode, which is endurance. And you have the sudden death mode, which uh, is more difficult because you only have a single crash. You can change if you want emergencies and weather events. You can change the difficulty by increasing the traffic intensity or lowering it. There are also challenges, uh, which uh, I think I've done a couple of them in the past. But we're going to go into the first level. Just have a quick overview of how the game works. And as you could probably tell by the uh, the name of the company that makes these, these are more of a simulation rather than an arcade game. And we have an airport, of course. We have three fields currently, and there's one under construction here, uh, which will become available later. And also, by the way, the music in the menu is awful, and it repeats like that uh, indefinitely, and it is a very short uh, song, and it sucks. But the music in-game is a bit better, fortunately, and you can turn it off here. There are also sound effects, but I don't really like those. Uh, they are loud and distracting. Unfortunately, the game doesn't have any audio. It doesn't really have any settings at all beyond these buttons down here, basically. You can also turn on chatter if you want, but I don't like that either. That makes the planes talk sometimes. Now you can see that the planes have landed and they've taxied to the terminals, and they are actually preparing for taking off again. So in this game, unlike the arcade one we played earlier, um, you actually have to manage the planes completely. They come in, land, unload, refuel, and then they take on new passengers, and then they want to take off again, of course. You have to manage all that, uh, make sure that the planes do not collide, and you have to uh, because you control when they land and when they take off. You can actually uh, change the um, runway. I just skip the tutorials in the future. Uh, you can assign, reassign them to new runways. And we're going to take immediate takeoff of that. You can cross the runway. And then you can come over to here you to take off. And this game is a bit more, it demands a lot more focus than the previous one, of course. Um, and for me, it's kind of nostalgic because I remember playing the, um, the online version of the third game, which was very similar to this, although more basic. Uh, we're going to want you to go slower. Actually, we're going to reassign you to a different field. Um, you can also put them in a holding pattern. We are going to reassign you to that field. Uh, they can collide both in the air and on the ground. Uh, so you have to be careful about that. Uh, the the company, Big Fat Simulations, also have a number of other games that are similar to this, sequels to this fourth one. Uh, there's one called World, and there's one called 3D, which I haven't really looked at. Um, so I don't know if those are any good or not. But uh, there we had a collision. Had them land a bit too tightly there, apparently. But yeah, there isn't much more to this that I can show right now 
either. Um, of course, we have the events that can happen. There can be emergencies, which can can be things like a special plane that comes in with, uh, which has an onboard emergency that needs to land immediately, or uh, the weather can change, go into a state where you have issues that you need to deal with. It could be a snowstorm, a sudden snowstorm, um, which makes uh, visibility limited. Things like that. And yeah. You of course don't want to uh, dally too much with the planes. They want to uh, leave as quickly as possible. We're going to have you go slower. Give that time to take off. And of course the later levels get more and more challenging. Um, fortunately not going to be able to um, show any of the later levels because that would make this video go quite long. Which I'm I don't really want that. So, yeah. Pretty much going to leave it here. As uh, a quick little nostalgia trip, I suppose, in a way. And also showing off an old but interesting game that I used to play a lot when I was younger. Okay, now you can take off. Um, you can also uh, putting, as you can see down here, the planes have a limited amount of fuel. So you can put planes in the holding pattern and you can have them go around. Uh, holding pattern will make them go in a circle in the air, which means you still have to watch out for coll collisions. Um, the go around, which means they will, means they will leave the map and then after a little while they will come back but I do believe that that will use up fuel uh, so they will have less fuel when they come back obviously um, and so you can't do that indefinitely and you also can't do that indefinitely because that would result in more and more planes building up which is bad I wish I could have them take off from a different field as well. But where are you going? No, oh, you can land on this strip. And you can land on that strip. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And I'm going to leave it here before I make some kind of terrible mistake other than the crash I've already had and embarrass myself further. And I will see you in the next video.